Welcome to Gleason College's 2022 eSafety vidcast. My name is Tom Dawson and I'm the Leader of Community Engagement here at Gleason College. Let's begin with an acknowledgement of country. Gleason College stands on Ghana land. Gleason College recognises the rich cultural heritage of our First Nations people and respects their ongoing deep spiritual connection with the land. We acknowledge the Ghana people as the traditional custodians of the land upon which our college is situated and power respects to their elders past, present and emerging. We strive to build our knowledge and understanding of First Nations cultures and work together with one heart to achieve a future characterised by unity and respect with equality and justice for all Australians. I'd now like to introduce Acting Assistant Principal of Religious Identity and Mission, Ms Alicia Sala, to lead us in prayer. In this vidcast, you'll receive a brief summary of current research and resources, heaps of tips, advice from expert staff and parents, and hear from one of our counsellors here at Gleeson College, Victoria Riviera. Hi everyone, my name is Victoria and I'm one of the counsellors here at Gleeson College. And today I'm so excited to be talking to you about e-safety. It's such an important topic um, for us all to really um, be really open and transparent about. And I think it's really important as parents and carers that um, for you to connect that you have a role in supporting your young person um, or child to be really safe in this space. So I want to start off by, I guess, sharing more around definitions um, and connecting that cyberbullying is a form of bullying. Um, it is a repeated negative behaviour. We know that cyberbullying is um, a little bit different because of the fact because it's online it can be a repeated behavior by sharing which makes it um, a little bit different to um, your typical bullying that would generally happen in in person um, we know that cyberbullying can take many forms so this can really include um, comments messages excluding ignoring um, tricking, um, humiliating, um, particularly through fake accounts, um, sharing of photos um, or videos um, that can be inappropriate um, and or threatening to share um, intimate images um, without consent to, to others. So I think it's really important, um, yeah, to understand that link between bullying and cyberbullying. They are the same, but it is a little bit different um, in terms of that sharing. You can see the little infograb says um, that one in five Australians age 8 to 17 report being socially excluded, threatened or abused online. And that's a really massive stat and one that has absolutely grown um, in the last, I would say, probably two to three years um, and definitely something that we have seen here in the Wellbeing Centre grow um, as concerns that present in the centre. There's a really strong link between poor wellbeing outcomes and the and use of, or should I say, overuse of social media. So you can probably see in that info grab um, on the screen that it's you can see some really concerning stats, and probably one of the most concerning ones for for me is that percentage of young people, um, which is at 24%, who are constantly connected and engaged in, in social media. And that's something that I have seen really on the increase. So um, I've definitely seen things like um, getting notifications um, come up for just about anything. Um, whether that's a message or there's been some sort of comment or connection. Um, I, I definitely see that as being a major concern um, which keeps young people really hooked into that social media space um, and I guess that, that need for connection. Um, Another really concerning stat for me is around that 53% of young people connect um, 15 minutes um, before bedtime. Now, a lot of us um, know that connecting with screen time before bed is not good, not good for our brains and the light and um, that emits off that screen, whatever it is, a laptop or 
phone, um, yeah, is not good for us to be able to transition into a, a proper REM sleep, which is what we need to be entering into to make sure that we can recover and um, be at our full potential. The other um, stat that, yeah, is concerning but doesn't surprise me is that the one in four has you know, of young people have experienced cyber bullying. So it's definitely an area now that had, that we've seen come through the wellbeing centre um, a lot more around negative connections um, via social media. So those those conversations or that may have taken place in person are now translated to happening online. And often we're seeing a lot of um, uh, conversations or comments or remarks that someone would not feel comfortable saying in person, but because they um, are behind the safety of a device, they're um, feeling more a bit, a bit more confident to make some of those really hurtful comments online. So it is really important um, for young people to develop online behaviours that help them navigate the internet and social media in a really informed, safe and meaningful way. And I've absolutely seen that. Um, so when you safely and in balance and connection with offline activities, um, young person's time online can be educational, um, it can help them build connections and have fun. Um, so there can be some obstacles to safe online use, um, such as cyberbullying and exposure to inappropriate or harmful content. Um, but it really is important to, as parents, um, and you are at the, the best place to su support your young person to have that really um, safe online um, experience. So modelling um, safe and balanced on and offline activities in your life can be a really useful way to encourage um, your child or young person to um, have those good behaviours. So really modelling um, those behaviours is really important. So we really encourage you to actively engage in conversations um, with your child and really try and be open and transparent around some of your concerns um, and seek information with your young person or child about their online use. Um, if you can really drill down into how much time they're spending on there, what sort of apps they're engaging in, it can help you have a really good idea of where they're at. Um, so as a parent, it can be really useful to keep an eye out for young people who maybe seem more tired than usual, um, appear less able to concentrate, seem more irritable. Um, they may have a decreased interest in other social activities um, and maybe you've started to see a decline in their academic performance. So these can be all indicators um, that, you know, they're starting to have difficulties and that could can be around their mental health. Um, and maybe time to do a bit of an audit on their own online um, use and balance. Over the remainder of the slides, there'll be um, lots of information and details on some really great resources that you can tap into. These are not only for you as parents, um, but also really great for your child or young person to tap into. Um, as always, the Wellbeing Centre is always here to answer any of your questions in regards to cyber safety. Um, so we yeah, would love to hear from you if you have any questions or concerns in this space. Thanks very much. Thanks, Vic. Our first resource, the Office of the eSafety Commissioner, eSafety.gov.au should be your first point of call for anyone with regards to eSafety whether it be parents, whether it be people in the community, students, teachers, everyone has separate sections of the website and there are so many website, so many other websites, resources, free webinars, tools, games, etc., which can be used to engage in conversations about positive behaviour online. The second website listed, the Carly Ryan Foundation, has excellent fact sheets for parents and students about what 
is appropriate for each age bracket and perhaps some of the warnings to be aware of when using apps such as the new craze TikTok. Um, it also gives you great downloadable um, settings helper sheets. So it tells you actually where to find the settings um, to ensure privacy, etc. And your account is private if you are using these um, services so that um, people can't access or find you. The final one is mainly for kids. However, it does have great information for parents and caregivers as well. It's got lots of information about bullying in general, but also e-safety and what to do if you need help in really child-friendly language. At cyber.gov.au, families can subscribe for alerts for new e-threats. For example, if there is a new style virus which is coming by email, a new system whereby people are hacking into text messages, etc., um, you can actually subscribe for a bulletin from the Australian government which alerts you when these new threats come out. Uh, Jocelyn Brewer's digital nutrition section and information on their website, including parent webinars and other information, um, was featured by the college last year and we ran a webinar by Jocelyn Brewer. Um, she's got a really um, down-to-earth positive approach to e-safety and has coined this term digital nutrition. So just like we need to take care of what we eat, um, just like we need to take care of our mental well-being, we also need to take care of our digital well-being. So she has some great tips and strategies, for example, for, draw for drawing up tech use agreements as a family. So what, what do we define as being okay? Um, what are some boundaries we should put in place to make sure we're safe and also look after our health and well-being? Raisingchildren.net.au has some great general parenting advice, for example, perhaps for having some of those difficult conversations that you might need to have regarding this. There are two parts to our shared responsibility for e-safety. One part for families is to ensure students are safe at home. One of our roles as a school is to help students understand important e-safety principles so that they are also safe at school. A range of policies exist at Gleeson College to help. For example, our mobile phone policy prohibits students using phones in the yard or during lesson unless explicitly directed to by a teacher. This ensures students can't take photos or send unwanted messages. Our BYOD and network use agreement are also incredibly clear in terms of what students should and shouldn't be doing on our computer networks. Our harassment and bullying policy also contains information regarding how we treat harassment and bullying at Gleeson College and the relevant consequences. CyberSmart presentations, resources, upskilling or workshops are also part of the, our pastoral care program, which exists as part of Faith and Living. The following slides contain tips from parents and staff members here at the college. The following slides unpack a useful tool one parent has found to help manage their students' time online. A copy of the handouts from tonight's session will be available on our website at gleason.college eSafety as well as lots of links to the resources shared. To conclude tonight, I'd like to invite families to complete a short survey on tonight's e-forum by heading to the link on the screen and or by scanning the QR code. Really appreciate your feedback in whether this session has been relevant and helpful for you. 
Thank you for watching our inaugural eSafety vidcast. Any questions, comments or feedback can be completed via the survey or email to me at tom.dawson at gleason.catholic.edu.au. Thank you.